Hi YouTube, in this video what I thought I'd do is go over some tools and techniques that you can uh, uh, use to transfer your reference onto your drawing medium. Now, there's a debate out there as to whether it is cheating for an artist to use these techniques in order to take your reference. For example, um, a drawing that I'm going to be doing here real soon is of this young lady looking through an opening in the wall. And to transfer this onto a sheet of paper that you're going to draw on or a canvas that you're going to paint on and whether that is cheating or not I'll leave that to the philosophers and so forth because basically my own personal feelings on this is that any tool that you can use to achieve your art is fair game and especially if your art or your self-expression is not necessarily the initial sketch that you're going to do but what you do to that initial sketch which in my case I will you know draw shade blend put details pull details out and do whatever I can to make it look as photorealistic as possible because that's what I happen to be currently into at this time of my life when it comes to art. However, if another person is not interested in duplicating what they see on a reference or real life but only wants to use it as a basis for their creation such as what Norman Rockwell did, he would take a a, a, a photo for example like this one and then he would draw or paint normally paint something that was that may have used you know this person coming out looking through a wall but then he would have changed other things on that painting to make it his original work so that was his thing uh, when it came to references and there's also debate about whether it's art if you're using a photograph for your um, reference rather than still art. So, you know, I don't care about, you know, let, let everybody argue that out. Personally, for myself, if it's good enough for Vermeer, if it was good enough for Rembrandt, if it was good enough for Caravaggio, if it was good enough for John Van Eek, it's good enough for me. All right. So anyway, let me get into the various ways that um, you can take your reference and put it on your drawing medium with proper proportion because proportion is key. If you don't get your proportion correct, it is not going to look like the reference especially the eyes we really got to get the eyes and we really got to get the creases on the face correct for that expression whatever that expression happens to be you can really change the expression if you do not get everything in there exactly the way that is shown on the reference the first way I'm going to show you here it's called the grid method. And this is the reference with a grid drawn on the reference. Now if you value your reference, in other words you don't want to mark it up, then I suggest you either print out a separate copy that you can mark up or you will use 
for example, a transparency such as what I have right here. You know, hopefully you can see the grid that I have printed on this transparency using my inkjet printer. And so you can see it right there as I put a white background. And this, you can print these out using your inkjet or you can use your laser, laser uh, printer. Uh, you just have to get the correct transparency for your printer to print it out. And this is another way to do it. And the whole idea of putting the grid on here is, let's say that I decide initially that I want to use one inch grid. So these lines are spaced out by one inches, and that's what, of course, you'd use a ruler for. Measure your reference, decide that you want to use inches or you can go down to half inches you can do two inches whatever you're comfortable with and I usually start with one inch especially on an 8 by 10 like this and you would divide it up into one inch squares very simple to do and I did it here already in advance with this piece of paper I went laid my ruler down put the marks at every inch top and bottom then side to side and I drew this grid. Now I've drawn this grid darker than I would normally do it because I wanted to make sure that you could see it on the camera. However, you want to make sure that when you draw your grid onto your drawing or painting surface that you do it lightly where you can just barely see the lines. That way your drawing will eventually cover it up or you'll want to erase these lines and, and the lighter they are, the easier they're going to come off. Now, how do you use this basic grid method? Okay, the whole idea is to take it one square at a time here. And normally what you would do is you would outline the outer dimensions here of, the, of the, whatever your reference is. And then you would start to get the eyes and the eyebrows and whatever else you have. So this square references this square. This one is here and so forth. If you duplicated it exactly the same on both sheets. And for example, I'm, I'm not going to do this whole thing on camera now. It would take a while. But what I want to show you here, for example, is the eye, which is one of the important things is the eyes. And I could see here. I can line my paper up, makes it easy to see that I'm going to be working here and exactly here because that's on the second row down is where it is. The other way is some people put A, B, C, D across here and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and they do it on the uh, references. Well, I don't like that. I don't see the point. Uh, but it is easy to lose track of where you are if you, if you put your initial drawing or items down in the wrong spot. You can count one, two, three, four, five, six, and then one, two, and then come here one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, and then yes, that's where I'm going to draw my uh, left eye in, in this uh, uh, grid here. Now, there's a couple of ways to do this, and I'm going to zoom in now at this point because we're only going to focus on that little part right there. Let's see, maybe I zoomed in too much. Give me some room here on the camera. Looking at this, okay, I can see that the eyebrow, for example, which starts in this square right here, I could see that this part of the eyebrow, the top of the eyebrow, is just above the middle point of this square. Now I could subdivide this square into quarters or eighths that, to fine tune it down to with a micro inch. But to me, this is the part where, you know, you just eyeball it and, and the squares make it easy to do. So knowing that this top here is just a little bit above the center, I can find the center here and just go a little bit above. Another thing that I like to do, however, is I like to just look at negative space. For example, instead of looking where the eyebrow itself is, look at the negative space. I see this little triangle right here. And so I'm going to duplicate that triangle right there in the same square on my drawing sheet. 
Then I come over here and I can see that I have this little tiny triangle here so I know that it's going to be about right there. And then I can see, all right, I'm not going to go all the way down, but about this much off of there. And so I can guesstimate, just keep comparing the two. And I can then just go ahead and complete the eyebrow. I come up here and I can see the negative space here. That's this part right here. And I can draw that right in there. Negative space. There it is, right there. And I know that now my eyebrow will go right above that. It's not the middle of the square, it's below it, which is where I am here. That works. I can connect this here. Here's my negative space here. I can see that it comes down to about right there. Then it kind of scoops up to about right there. And I can see it's right there. So this part right here is this part right here, negative space. And by focusing on the negative space, I can get this proportions in pretty good, almost precise. That's the hair coming down right there. Okay, so that's my eyebrows. Then I can come down here and I see, all right, where's this, this crease of the eyelid here? Well, I can see that from the top of the square to here, it's about this distance. And from here to here, it's about this distance. And then I can see that it kind of comes up to the middle of the square and then goes over. So I'm going to go up to the middle of the square, just like that, and come over. There you go. And then I can come over here and again, just eyeball the distances between the lines that I want to draw in the line that is on the square itself. And this is how you would transfer the original onto your drawing paper or canvas. Now, another way to do this with the grid method and with the other methods as well is to use a compass or a proportional the divider and that will help you to get everything exact 